Hello, my name is Steve Dren, and I teach 7th grade at the Forest Park Middle School. I've been teaching math for 20 years. In the last three years, I have been improving my teaching through my work in the West Cook Mathematics Initiative and my collaboration with other teachers. You're in your usual seat, Clayton, your usual seat. If I walked into Steve Drent's classroom 10 years ago, I would have seen the kids sitting in rows, facing a chalkboard. He would explain how to solve a problem. He would assign them an assignment. Now, there's not a row anywhere. The kids are sitting facing one another in pairs, sometimes in threes and fours. The kids, instead of the paper pencil, are working off of the whiteboards. There's the Promethean board, you know, which has totally changed the way that math can be taught. None of that was prevalent 10 years ago. And we have some gym shoes. When I used to teach and I used to have everything set up, it was very easy. I almost had things what I was going to say and do. And uh, the sheet are now by 20%. When one student's doing the problem one way, I have to plan out what kinds of problems will they have, how might they do this, and how am I gonna help them to work through it to figure the problem out. Think mentally in your head how you would compute what the new cost of the shoes will be after they discount the price. Uh, let, let's get some, just get some answers out there first. The mathematics that students are learning requires more problem solving and critical thinking. It emphasizes reasoning and defending your answers, not just memorizing formulas. When we learned math, it was a uh, math teacher giving an example or, or a definition, and then you went home and did 25, 30 problems. Now it's more about getting into thinking how the mathematics works. You did 25 divided by 100. What is the new cost? Our lesson today is about ratios and proportions. But our lesson every day is about solving math problems and working collaboratively. Each time you take a turn, please explain why you think it is what you think it is. All right? When I make the seat assignments, I'll deliberately pair two people together who came to the same answer by different routes. No, this is multiplying. I know, but it's. He's right. That means each will have to explain how they got their answer, and they'll have to hash it out among themselves. <laughs> because when you have to explain your answer, you understand it better. Do you want to use the percentages, or do you just want to stick to a number? So it'd be more than 25%. Well, I think the reasoning they use goes way beyond mathematics. And I, get, I think that's why a lot of the focus in math is changing to more problem solving. Because those are the skills that you can bring into all the other things. They start to see that I can think, I can figure things out. And there's a ratio of one dollar to every ten. And with that success, you know, hopefully they start to appreciate math. Let's all have a seat. Uh, you know the problem of the month we've been working on. You know, you're planning a race. Steve is not a big cheerleader type. He's not up there clapping his hands and high-fiving the students. How to run against this Kenyan runner. He's just there in the trenches digging it out race. every day. And you kind of want to stay so far behind him and then pass him up at the end. When so students come out of my class, they will be able to solve mathematics problems and apply those problem-solving skills in the real world. They will be prepared for success in the next stages of their education and able to pursue any career.